Yo, what's going on everybody? I'm Tupli Tai and welcome back to another episode in our single player Pixelmon series where I'm bringing you guys along with me on my first ever Pixelmon playthrough. And I just want to apologize really quickly guys, I've been sick for a few weeks now, my voice has been coming and going, so if I, if I have a, a slightly weak voice or I, I have voice cracks or my voice just goes during this episode, I apologize. So just bear with me with that. But in this episode, I'm going to start off, I want to start talking about my team right now. So that I just filled out my team with Swampert, Fennekin, Charizard, Murkrow, Corvusquire, and Dragonair. Because those are Pokemon that I really want to try and level up and evolve. And that I might end up using fighting the Grass Gym in the near future. And one of the things I'm going to do as well is go down into our basement and pull out some of the experience candies that we got from our raid episode when we got a ton of those from doing raids. But yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, okay, so I left the rest of the candies and experience candies that I collected in here. So we're just going to pull all of these out right now. I'm not sure, I don't think I'm going to use all of them, but we'll see. But I really want to use these specifically on Charizard, Harvestquire, and Dragonair. Because I really like those three, and they're both really powerful, and I think I'm just going to use them a lot in the future. Alright, so as you guys can see, we got Charizard up to level 40, Corvusquire level 35, and Dragonair level 39. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to waste the rest of my candies continuing to evolve them. Because we can do some battling to improve them. One other thing I've been spending a little time looking into as well is just the move sets on some of these Pokemon that I plan on using. Because, like, I think I can't remember if I mentioned, but like, Charizard, I caught level 36. And he didn't really have, you know, Embers is only good for a fire move. So we're definitely going to need to get some better moves, and just in general, I kind of want to start using TMs on my Pokemon to actually start getting them a better move set. And we, we haven't really spent too much time on TMs or anything. In the last episode, actually, when I was at a few of the villages, I ended up buying quite a few different TMs because I didn't really realize that all the shop, there's so many shopkeepers that sell lots of TMs. And so just because I'm going to spend a little time on TMs, I'm going to go ahead and go to a village right now. So I'm going to throw out Charizard. He's going to be our flying mount for the episode. And we're going to fly over to some of the villages nearby. And we're going to buy some TMs or just a couple. And then I'm going to show you guys how to use TMs. I mean, it's pretty easy and self-explanatory. But we'll use some TMs, get some better moves on our, on our Pokemon, and then move on from there. All right, guys. So we came up to this desert village that we found before. And if you guys don't know how to get TMs or where to find them, Really just going to villages is your best bet. So if you come to villages and go to the Pokemarts, you can go and talk to the right shopkeeper. And not always, but sometimes they will sell TMs. You can see here we have a, he only sells a handful of TMs, but we can buy some TMs from the Pokemart here. I'm going to go ahead. I've already bought a handful of these before, but Mystical Fire, actually, I'm going to buy that because I do want to try and get some better fire moves for Charizard. I'm not sure if that one's going to be worth putting on him, but we'll buy that anyway. And then another spot other than the Pokemarts where you can find people that sell TMs is going to actually be some of these shop stalls. So if you ever come to the villages that have a lot of these shop stalls and there's shopkeepers around like these guys, some of them might just sell Pokeballs and other like uh, potions and things like this one does. But some of them, like this guy I believe, he will also sell some TMs as well. So eventually, or sometimes when you find these shop stalls, you also find the shopkeepers that sell these as well. And he's got even more moves than that Pokemart guy did. And I think it's pretty random, just whatever shopkeeper you happen to find might sell just different moves. But let's go ahead and get Snarl, actually. I'm not sure if I bought Snarl yet. It's a good dark type move. And I'm almost pretty much out of money now because I did spend a ton of money the last couple episodes on TMs. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work to replenish our funds, battle some trainers, and steal a bunch of stuff and sell it back to the market. But, but yeah, those are the pretty much the easiest and... The only ways that I know of so far to get TMs, I think you get TMs from beating gyms as well. The gym leader will give you a TM related to that gym type. But otherwise, finding these shopkeepers and going to Pokemarts is the way to find TMs. So now that we got some TMs, guys, there were a couple in particular that I wanted to use on a couple of the Pokemon in our party. And one of them is first going to be Charizard. And because, you know, if we check his moves really quickly, he has a crappy fire move and then a couple decent dragon moves, but that's really it. And he is a flying type, so I kind of want to give him a flying move. And especially fighting the grass gym, that'll be helpful. And so I do have air slash TM here. So if I go ahead and have that in my inventory here, we just right click on your Pokemon that's out. And just like that, it'll allow us to add this air slash move to Charizard. We're going to get rid of Dragon Breath because he already has two Dragon moves and Dragon Claw is way better. So we'll get rid of Dragon Breath. And now he has air slash and he's gonna be that much more effective and now he's got two stab moves and if you guys don't know what stab is actually a quick talk about that stab is same type uh, attack bonus so that just means that if you're using a move that is the same type of your pokemon so in this case fire or flying you're gonna get a 
the attack's gonna be that much more strong. I believe it's 1.5 times as strong or something like that. So it is just better to use the moves of the same type as your Pokemon. I was expecting TMs actually to just disappear after you used it once, but we can still see I still have this Air Slash, so I guess you don't need to buy multiples of TMs, so that's good to know. But now that we have Dragonair out, I want to teach him another move, and I'm going to teach him this Breaking Swipe Dragon move, because this is a pretty powerful Dragon-type move. And if we look at him right now, he actually did just get Dragon Rush. I kind of forgot we leveled him up, and he got Dragon Rush, which is a pretty strong attack. But Breaking Swipe is also 100% accuracy, 60% power and it lowers the attack of the, the person we're attacking, so I think that's going to be a really good move to have. So we're just going to get rid of Rap. Rap is kind of a useless move, honestly, in my opinion, so we'll get rid of that. He might have two Dragon-type moves now, but we got a little more variety on Charizard and Dragonair now. Alright, so I just came back home to our home base really quick, guys, so I'm just going to drop off all the extra TMs that we have in our inventory now. But I kind of forgot, you know, we just bought that Mystical Fire, and I don't even know how good this move is, so I'm going to actually check and see right now if Charizard... Oh, see, okay, this is a good move. Power 75, 100% accuracy, and this also lowers the target's special attack. That is the perfect move for Charizard. And I would replace Ember just because it's way stronger than Ember, but it only has 10 PP, and I could end up blowing through that pretty quickly. So I'm just going to get rid of Scary Face, again, a move I probably will never use. So now, Charizard is really decked out and, and feels so much more comfortable now that he actually has a really good Fire-type move. So we got a good Fire-type, a Dragon-type, and an, a Flying-type move, so I'm super happy with that. So give me just a second, I'm going to go put away all of the extra TMs that we have. And then, I actually plan on going to the Nether, because I want to actually try and check out and see if maybe we can get a Catch combo going on some of the Pokémon in the Nether, because again, Fire-types are going to be good against the Grass Gym when we eventually battle that. And I definitely want to try and see if we can find the same Pokemon over and over and over in the Nether and get a really high IV catch combo fire type Pokemon. All right, guys, so we made it into the Nether and we made our way back to the Ghost Village, the Ghost uh, Village and Gym that we found earlier. And I'm going to spend a little time just wandering around here and wandering around the Nether in general to see if we can find a uh, good Pokemon that's going to be worth trying to get a catch combo on to see if we can get some really high IVs eventually. And this actually, Houndower might be one of those Pokemon we do, because I know that's one of the more common spawns. And yeah, if I look at my map right here, there's tons of Houndower everywhere. So that might be one of the Pokemon we try to get a catch combo going really quickly. And I'm not going to make you guys sit through me getting trying to get to 40 uh, catches. So give me just a second, I'll see how high I can get the catch combo, and we're going to catch a ton of Houndowers. A few moments later. Oh, well guys, I was not being careful enough in the nether and I screwed up and died and lost a ton of resources and that is very sad so I'm gonna try and quickly go back there and see if maybe that stuff is still there oh my god guys so I made it back to where I died here where I was trying to do this raid over here that's now gone and I fell into this lava and just died immediately but thankfully I actually somehow one of the few items that did not burn up in the lava was our Pokebag, which I'm actually pretty stoked about, so at least we still have that, but I lost a ton of Pokeballs, potions, a lot of other stuff I can't even think, which is really sad, but at least we got some of it back, thankfully, and otherwise I'm just going to continue on with battling Houndars right now. I might throw them back to home really quickly and get some more supplies because of everything we lost, but at least we got some repeat balls still and we can keep catching Houndars and get our catch combo up. Oh, and check this out, guys. As we've just been catching more and more Hound Hours. I've just been using Fennekin, you know, started at level 5, but just catching all of the Hound Hours has given them a ton of levels and enough to evolve into Braxen. Alright, guys, so we made it back to our home base here just to replenish on a few supplies after we died in the Nether. And one thing I realized that I desperately miss having that I lost in the lava was the old running boots that we had that increased our speed by 50%. And this uh, gives us actually an opportunity to, I didn't realize you can actually craft old running boots. So we're gonna do that right now. And how we do that is first just craft some leather boots. And then we're gonna put our leather boots in the top of the crafting table with two iron pieces, our iron ingots right next to those. And then below those iron ingots, we're gonna put one feather or two feathers. And just like that, we get old running boots. So now we finally have a pair of these again. We can put those on and finally start running faster again because that was really annoying me that I was moving so slow especially in that soul sand valley in the nether it just moves so slow 
And let's go do a quick raid, and then we'll be back in the nether catching more hound hours. Something else worth mentioning, guys, that I did not realize and I was really worried about when I did that raid battle and ended up catching the Tortuga. I thought that that might actually end our catch combo for Hound Hour, but it looks like it doesn't. So yeah, keep that in mind. Raids won't actually ruin your catch combo at all, so that's really good to know. All right, guys, so this just blew my mind. We had a legendary spawn right in front of us. This is Marshadow that's on fire, and we are going to try to see if somehow we can maybe catch him. I have no idea how this is going to go. We haven't caught a legendary yet, but I think Quick Balls are probably going to be our best bet. At least I'm just going to try and see if we can throw a couple of Quick Balls and maybe get really lucky here. Otherwise, maybe... Oh, I didn't realize Charizard's so low on health. Crap. Yeah, he's already out. That's not good. Oh, man. A few moments later. Damn, he took us out. All right, let's see if maybe we can... Uh, if he doesn't despawn, we can go heal up and get back here really quickly. Uh, we might have lost that Marshadow. Yeah, that's upsetting, guys. I can't remember exactly where we were, where we fought that Marsh Shadow, but... We tried and we failed. My bad. All right, guys, so now we got to a catch combo of 31 for Hound Hour, which means that now we get guaranteed four perfect IVs. So all there's at least four IVs for him will be max 31, which is going to be great. So we're going to catch maybe like, I don't know, 10 more, and then we'll go back and check our PC and check all the IVs and see if we got a really good one. All right, guys, so we ended up catching a total of, I think, 43 Hound Hours. So here are all the ones that we ended up catching in this box, and then I think there's going to be more... Yep, on here as well. So I'm going to go through and check all the IVs. Obviously, the most recent, like 10 or 12 catches that we've had should have the best IVs because those have guaranteed perfect IVs. So we're going to check all these and I'll let you guys know what the best one we got was. All right, guys. So I went through about the 43 or so found hours that we ended up catching. And this one at the end of our party here, if we check, he is 94% IVs. Look how good that is. He's, he's got... That's the best IVs that we found so far, and that's going to be amazing. So you know we're going to use him on our team with all of our fire types and flying types when we go to take on the grass gym. But for now, I think I'm going to call that good for the nether. That was the main reason I wanted to get the catch combos and try and get some more fire type Pokemon. And Hound Hour, which will evolve to Hound Doom, will be a really good one. He's got a mega evolution as well, so that'll be super helpful. But now I'm going to head back to the overworld, go to our base. And we might see if we can complete some quests and then also look into a couple other things. I'm kind of curious. I found a decent amount, or I found some ancient debris and other scraps. Another right scraps. And I want to see how many I have back at home because there might be something I want to do with those in the very near future. Um, guys, I just literally came through the portal and look what has spawned here in front of our base at level 36 Charmeleon. What? <laughs> This is insane. Oh my god. This this like area where my uh, farm base is here constantly gets the best fire spawns and I get tons of fire starters and it's, it blows my mind, but I am not going to complain. Let's see if we can get him with a quick ball. I feel like that's going to obviously be our best chance and we'll just keep running and throwing quick balls until we get him. Let's try this again. Oh, stop moving around, Charmeleon. Stay still. So I really hope that we can just keep going and battling him and throwing quick balls over and over until we catch this Charmeleon. We'll run away and keep battling and throwing quick balls. And then worst case, we'll try to try to battle him down a little bit and lower his health and then maybe we can catch him, but first things first, quick balls. Stay in one of these balls, please, please, come on. Yeah, I don't want to attack him because I feel like, you know, I'll do mud shot that should not kill him and if it does, I'm going to cry. No! Oh my god, guys, what is wrong with me? Why did I do that? My god, all right, guys, never mind. Let's just uh, pretend that didn't happen. That was another great embarrassing moment for two ply tie. Fantastic. Ugh. All right, guys, so we are back at our home base because, again, I wanted to drop a few things off and then I wanted to check and check this out. Just from checking out the ghost village in the nether there, we found four ancient debris and three netherite scraps. Not just in that trip, but the couple trips that we've been there. Not to tease you guys, but in a very near future episode, there's something I'm going to be trying to make that's going to require netherite scraps. So stay tuned for that. I'm really excited about that. But I'm going to put these away for now. And then also, I'm going to head back. And where there's a quest that I forgot we actually had, which is a quest we've already done before. This Apricorn Avalanche one where we still have to collect 10 of each Apricorn. So I'm going to head back to our farm and we're going to do that really quickly and then complete that quest. Alright, here we go. Time to collect some more Apricorns. Let's get it. Just go right down the middle and 
smack all these abhorns. All right, we completed the Apricorn Avalanche. And this is one actually on Journey Map. I'm pretty sure I did actually mark this one and where it was. Ah, and here it is. Cool. And this right here, Apricorn Quest. So we'll go ahead and head over to this desert village and complete that quest. All right, so we made it to the desert village here where our quest giver is supposed to be. So let's go quick pull up our quests and find the Apricorn Avalanche. We'll track it. And then now we can see in the bottom right there, there's our arrow telling us where our quest giver is. As long as I don't kill myself first by falling in holes. Oh, there he is. Let's go. I forget what we got as a reward from the last time for this. We'll find out. Oh, that's right. We got a Whalmer Pale. And that's actually, this is, this is literally perfect. This is exactly kind of how I wanted to wrap this episode up, was regarding the Whalmer Pale. I almost forgot, but I did want to talk about this, because this is the second one we've had. And so now I'm going to head back to our farm where, you know, we just finished doing our berry farm in the last time where our apricorn farm is. And I will show you guys what the Whalmer Pale does. Okay, there is no way this just happened again, guys. There's a Charizard flying up here. What? Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, I got him. I just had to hit him. So then now we can use one of our other Pokemon once he escapes. I know he's going to break out. Oh man, oh man, no, 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 no. I can't see him. Char Riding Char's already so big, so I can't ever see what I'm doing. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, cool. All right, we got in a battle with him. That's all I wanted. I was sick of trying to chuck Pokeballs at him in the air. I suck at catching those flying types. So, quick ball. Get some good first quick ball luck, please. No chance. Let's see, what are we gonna do here? There's a level 40 Charizard. So I could... I feel like potentially use... Oh man, I don't know if Water Pulse is gonna take him out or not, but we're gonna try it. Oh, what? Oh man, the Pokemon gods were smiling down on us this time, guys. What the hell, 2.4% health left on this Charizard. And he keeps flying higher and higher up. I'm gonna try a repeat ball, honestly, because as we know, I got a Charizard on my team already. So we've already caught one. Repeat ball, let's go! Second Charizard, guys. We still haven't caught Charmander. We failed like three times on Charmander. We failed a few times, or failed earlier this episode catching Charmeleon. But what the hell, that is amazing. Oh my God. We're gonna have to go back to our PC quick now and check him out. But, like I mentioned just a little bit ago, I wanted to show you guys what the Whalmer Pail does. Alright guys, so when it comes to using the Whalmer Pail, I thought that you could potentially just use it on any leaves of the trees that haven't grown a berry or an apricorn yet. But that's not the case, like if I find an empty one, and if I get rid of that, I can't regrow it with the Whalmer Pail. But what you can do, is that if you plant another berry tree like so, then you can use the Whalmer Pail, right click on it. And boom, just grow a tree just like that. And then, you know, obviously we could do the same thing with apricorns. So we put an apricorn down for apricorn tree. Right click with the whale repel a couple times. And boom, we got a tree just like that. So yeah, that's the, I think that's the main use of the whale repel. But honestly, guys, I think we are going to call it an episode there. This episode is, this has been a crazy episode. We've had a lot happen, a lot of cool stuff. But right before we wrap this up, let's come to our PC. Let's pull out our second Charizard, guys. It's insane. If we just had a full team of Charizards, how crazy would that be? Maybe that'll be a long-term goal. But let's check the IVs of him really quickly. And he's at 52%, which I think was pretty close to our other Charizard. He's a 45, so he's actually better than our other Charizard. And they're both level 40. That is so insane, guys. So, yeah, I think we're going to call it an episode here. Check this out. We have two Charizards now on our team. So... We're going to have these bad boys with us for a while. You know, they're going to be helping us take on the grass gym soon. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something about TMs, how to use the whale repel, using the catch combo to get Hound Hour. I'm super excited about all that. And we will continue grinding. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Appreciate you watching. Take care and peace out. See you next time.